my managing editor made some very, very valid observations and points over there. I want you to deliberate on some of them. He's talked about how, uh, in fact, in the, the United States is also now coming to that point where it wants to acknowledge that India is no more non-aligned in its stance. It is multipolar, which is what it wants to align itself with and not uh, be known as a non-aligned nation. Is the United States now coming to reckon with India's standing as far as acknowledging a multipolar world is concerned? And, and anyone who impartially looks at history can understand that uh, when America is successful in a military battle with Japan or South Korea, the United States does not seek to occupy or control. We've seen when the Chinese controlled North Korea or elsewhere, we see, we see what, the, what the confrontation is. All we want is nations like like Thailand and 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 uh, South Korea and you know, individual countries to be successful on their own. We 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 don't want a Belt and Road program whereby we manipulate and control them. We just want to have a strong relationship. And let, let me on this point say something that might not be fully appreciated in India, and that is that every nation in the world, the leader wants to come to the United States, and there's real competition for the time. And as a result, this president in particular has not been able to meet with many of the leaders that when they have come. And if they do, there's a competition as whether or not they, they get to stay at the, at the guest house and all. But there, this is only the third state dinner, only the third in his entire presidency, number one. Number two, it's not traditional to invite speakers to come speak to the, to the Congress. In the last 50 years, you can count on your fingers the number of foreign leaders who have addressed the Congress of the United States. And so I think that Indians should be fully aware that uh, that Prime Minister Modi uh, was given the two highest honors that America can give and was very, very warmly received. And I think it's been a very successful but, visit. Bob, I don't think Indians need to worry because uh, here we have a prime minister who's uh, successfully managed bipartisan support. But let me also come to the crucial aspects of the prime minister's visit. And I'd like to take that uh, from Nicole. Nicole, there were questions raised about democracy and minority rights as well. Uh, even prior to prime minister's visit, we've seen, uh, you know, senators and uh, American lawmakers write an open letter to President Biden. Biden, do you think that this kind of politicization uh, before a very significant, crucial visit uh, is, is more, more to do with politics than to, you know, in fact, bring in real benefits to both countries? Well, look, this is the beauty of a democracy, right? We can voice our opinions and have all sides. We certainly saw some of the more progressive members of the Democratic Party boycott the speech last night. We've seen some open letters written, and they're raising questions about this. We also saw some of the journalists at the press conference that that followed um, their, their speech on the South Lawn ask these same questions. That's part of what's the beauty of being in a democracy he also had the opportunity to respond to those so this was this is something that they are concerned with i think that these members of congress concerns are genuine i don't think they're just trying to make politics um, but they wanted their message to be received and they felt the most forceful way to do that was to boycott the speech but they could uh, in india's defense and the fact of the matter is that uh the Prime Minister also used the word hearsay. Uh, it was a Hindi word that he used, which was only indicating how there was no concrete uh, sort of uh, reference, but there was a lot of hearsay that was brought to the table. Uh, I'm now going to, in fact, touch upon some significant MOUs as well. Uh, Tikinder, if I could bring you in on semiconductors and the role that semiconductors are now going to uh, play in sort of counterbalancing uh, the, the, the kind of technological clout that China has been building and not to forget the fact that it is the semiconductor industry which is also coming at the heart of the China-Taiwan tensions. Uh, what could such an investment of, of semiconductors in India mean for the geopolitics in South Asia, especially Indo-Pacific. Right. I mean, the way to think about this is 
Semiconductors are to technology what oil is to energy. It is the single greatest resource that you know defines how much we can produce of our iPhones, of our computers, of all the backbones of our servers that we use to run our daily lives. It's very important, very crucial. And the fact that China is the main exporter of semiconductors means that it holds a lot of sway in the world. Um, and you can see these MOUs really trying to target that. But obviously, there are hurdles into making India a competitor in the semi a, a semiconductor export industry. For example, you know, India is still a developing country with limited energy resources, and semiconductors are pre uh, precision hardware that requires a lot of en energy, that requires a lot of stability. Um, the second question of that is the rare earth minerals that are required in order to in order to make these semiconductors. China is also a main resource for that. So starting semiconductor, uh, starting you know, resource extraction for those semiconductor uh, parts in India is also a very big part of these memorandums of understanding. And that could be you know, geopolitically, I think that that is a that is the big, you know, that is the big tension point between U.S. and U.S. and China, one of the big ones. And I think it is a place where India can play a key part in this chess move for the United States. Um, I think domestically what that means is a lot more jobs for India, but also it means that, you know, a lot of Mo the Modi government's key allies are going to be seeing huge contracts, huge you know, leeways for natural resource extraction that they've already had. Um, I And I think in the country, it's one thing to say, maybe this will lead to a growing middle class, but you can also see this making the wealthy much wealthier.